Hi boys and girls, today we're going to be moving into equivalent fractions. So first I'd like you to write our new vocabulary word, and you may have seen this word before. The word is equivalent. Equivalent means equal amounts or an equal value of something. In this case we're talking about equivalent fractions. So take a look at this example below. We have two rectangles which seem to appear to be about the same size. We've divided this rectangle into two pieces, and we've divided this rectangle into four pieces. Here I have one part out of two parts shaded. So the part shaded for this rectangle is one half. Over here, I have two parts shaded. So we have two parts out of four parts shaded over here, or two fourths. If you look very carefully, you can clearly see that both rectangles have the same amount or same value shaded. So we can say that one half is equal to two fourths. But what do you do when you don't have a picture? What do you do if you just have fractions? How do you find equivalent fractions? Well, I'm going to show you. Let's take the fraction 3 eighths. We need to find an equivalent fraction for 3 eighths that has a denominator of 16. So for this shape, we can almost picture something broken up into 8 parts. And for this fraction, we can almost picture a shape, the same shape, broken up into 16 parts. How do we figure out what the parts shaded? How do we get them equal to each other? Well, normally you can either use multiplication or division. If you notice that your denominator is going up, as in this example, you're going to use multiplication. So we need to ask ourselves, how do we get from 8 to 16 using multiplication? And if you know your fast facts, you know that 8 times 2 will give you 16. Now there's a rule with equivalent fractions. When creating them, whatever you do to the numerator, you must do to the denominator or vice versa. So here we multiplied our denominator by 2, so we must also then multiply our numerator by 2. And when we have 3 times 2, we get 6. So we have just created an equivalent fraction that shows that 3 eighths is equivalent to 6 sixteenths. Okay, let's try one more example. All right, here we have 4 eighths as a fraction on this side. On the right side, we have another fraction that's incomplete. We need to create an equivalent fraction with it. So we're going to use the information that we have to see what step we need to do next. Now notice my denominator is what's missing. So for the first step, I'm going to be dealing with just my numerators. And like I said before, to find equivalent fractions, you're normally going to either be multiplying or dividing. So let's take a look at our numerators. My first numerator is 4. My 4 then becomes a 1. So what must you do to 4 to make it 1? And if you notice, we're going down. So that tells us we need to divide. So 4 divided by what will give you 1? 4 divided by 4 equals 1. And as the rule stated before, whatever you do to one number, you must do to the other. So if we divide the numerator by 4, we must divide the denominator by 4 as well. And 8 divided by 4 equals 2. So I've now created an equivalent fraction that shows 4 eighths is equivalent to 1 half. All right, it's time for you to try some examples on your own. And you may do this in box three of your homework sheet. We have 2 thirds being equivalent to something over 9, 4 sixths being equivalent to something over 12, 3 eighths being equivalent to something over 6, and 1 half being equivalent to 4 over something. So try your best with these problems, boys and girls. And I think that this is supposed to be a 16. There we go, that makes it a little better. And try your best, and you can always review the steps if you need to remind yourself how to find equivalent fractions.
And as always, if you have questions or comments or other strategies you use to solve these problems, please feel free to put those in box number four of your homework sheet and we'll discuss them in class tomorrow. You've been Flipped with Mrs. Manafa.